so let's move on so the next bit involves a lot of copying and pasting from well you we could type this in by hand but it's obviously like going to be error prone as i've said before so what i'm going to do now is to skip this chapter chapter 10 i'll come back to it and i'm going to skip chapter 11 which is probably where we rebuild most of the system actually chapter 11 and I'm going to go on to chapter 12 again there's some tools there uh, boot script so i'm going to skip that that's where we set up the final booting of the system and move on to chapter 13 so what we've done we've just completed chapter 9 i've skipped chapter 10 11 and 12 and gone to 13 the reason is i want to get the networking working so that i can carry on with the remainder of the build doing it remotely but actually accessing the linux of scratch 1.0 as i said we're not really using SUSE at all anymore um, once I've got that remote access, I'll be able to do copying and pasting um, because obviously I'll be copying and pasting within the same environment. But what you can see on the screen at the moment is uh, the machine that I'm rec doing this recording on with this browser, but the terminal is just a, a data stream sent from, from the terminal of the video signal. So I've got to install NetKit Base and then netkit tools and then i've got to jump back to chapter 12 i think it is to install is it chapter 12 chapter 11 i have to find i can't remember where it was now No, it's forward. It's forward to chapter fourteen, I think it is. Or fifteen even. Yes, yeah, fifteen. So I'll jump so after I've done thirteen, I'll jump forward to chapter fifteen. Um do fifteen dot one to install the Telnet daemon and client. I only want the daemon because I'm accessing it from another machine into the LFS machine um, but it doesn't matter the fact that the client gets installed as well and then I'll be coming down here where is it to the bottom to where is it yes to here to configure this INET D file to configure a boot script to start it off and then finally do doing some tests on it here and then i'll go back to chapter nine uh sorry chapter 10 and carry on the remainder of the build from there so chapter 13 we start by installing netkit base so let's see where we are we're in vim still so let's tidy that up and extract netkit base netkit base Okay, I'm pack it, configure the package by running configure. And compile the package by running make. And install it by running make install. Okay, copy the following files from the etc sample directory to the etc directory. So cp, let's do minus v to see what's happening, etc.sample. And we've got to copy services and protocol. 
calls project calls and we copy both of those files to the etc directory yep so they've copied fine let's go back and remove let's kit base right what i'm going to do actually for carry on is to alter my prompt because i can't see what directory i'm in that could potentially be very dangerous so let's see what it is at the moment not that it matters really backslash s backslash v so that's just the shell and the version that's being put up in the prompt which is what we can see so what i'm going to do is to edit um i think it will be the profile dot profile uh right okay so it's not via it's vim if you wanted to use via you'd have to set up a shortcut a link rather a sim link so i want to do export ps1 equals um Let's do the username. Oh, I've got to find my black slash backslash username. Open bracket backslash working directory. Close bracket space with a hash to show that with a root and another space just to put a bit of a space between that. Let's see if that works okay. So if I log out and log back in again, yep, there we go. We've got the name of the user root and in between the square brackets is the current path, which is currently obviously the home. So if I CD sources, you'll see that gets updated. So did I get rid of that netkit directory? Yes, I did. Okay, so we can move now on to net tools. So unpack it and then just compile it straight away by running make. So Z cat net tools tar minus XV CD net tools just run make. Right, we've got some questions here. So Uh, the net tools package is currently being translated to French, German, Brazilian, Portuguese. Does your system support GNU get text? Right, well, um, as I said, I did, I did install it for SU 6.1, but we haven't got it for LFS, I don't believe. Let's go to another virtual terminal and log in and just check i don't believe it's been installed and i don't think it's due to be installed and no you can see it's not there at all so we've got to answer the way it's thought which is no so we'll just accept that default protocol families just accept the default there is a unix protocol accept that yeah we're not using ip6 um, probably best just to accept these defaults I'm not sure no we haven't got these protocols what I'm going to do is start this again um, so no we haven't got that it is a Unix protocol we'll need that we don't need that so we haven't got that protocol so I'll put a no there haven't got Apple Talk haven't got that one haven't got that one haven't got that one haven't got that one or that one. Yes, we have got Ethernet, so we'll take yes to that one. Um, did I answer yes to that second one? Yes, I did. That's good. Uh, let's get that back. Arcnet, no. Slip, no. 
no, 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 no. Right, masquerading support. I've just got in my notes to answer no to all the others. Unless you know about something there that you definitely know you need, um, just do as I do and answer yes to Unix protocol, yes to TCP IP, and yes to Ethernet. Okay, and now we can run make install. And that's complete. So it says to create an ETC and it the local, local net boot script. But as I say, I don't want to copy and paste just by eye. I want to do it um, using the mouse to avoid any potential errors or omissions. So what I'm going to have to do now is to boot back to the um su 6.1 to to copy this script um and while i'll do i'll probably do all these other ones as well just so that next time we re reboot into linux from scratch 1.0 everything should be set up we've got the programs in there all that remains is the configuration um and we should be able to boot into there and as i say we'll move on to chapter 15 and install the telnet daemon um, and i'll probably actually while i'm in the 6.1 configure put the uh, scripts in for that so that's ready so all we need to do is reboot the machine back into linux from scratch one and with any luck we'll have remote access and we'll be able to carry on the remainder of the build remotely so i'm going to log out of this now uh, let's tidy up first. Log out. Do control delete reboot into. Okay, it doesn't know anything about rebooting because the boot scripts aren't there yet. So what I need to do is go back in. I forgot we've got to remount the um, root partition as read only to ensure that the reboot doesn't cause any problems. So minus N minus O read only remount dev HDA six onto root. So that should now be read only. I'm not sure why that doesn't come up there. Maybe because the uh, M tab doesn't exist. Um, uh, what I'll need to do is to do, uh, let's try reboot minus F. See if that forces a reboot. Right, yeah, this, yes, it has done. Okay, so I'll set the uh, video up to be on the remote machine and we'll carry on. Okay, so here we are back on the remote terminal with a Telnet session into LFS 1.0 on the Pentium 233. So let's get past this one. Um, we can actually do these boot scripts now um, while we're here. Uh, we could copy and paste them now, but I'll leave them for the moment because that's not really the focus. And we're going to setting up basic networking. So we need to create an ETC init D local net boot script. So we've got to remember now that we're not in the LFS1 system. We're back in the SU 6.1. So we've got a prefix, any paths um, for editing, that is not the actual script, with uh, $LFS. So I'm going to edit this, VI, $LFS, and paste that path in, because we don't want to edit a file on the local SU's system. Uh, which would be pointless and potentially dangerous to the SUSE system. So we'll copy this script in. It's all of this actually. 
Okay, and save that. Kind of far for writing. So that probably means that there is uh, a directory missing. And that's also probably because we've missed out the details on chapter 10. So maybe it's best to go back to that and complete chapter 10 onwards. Um, yeah, oh yes, in fact, in my notes I've got, go, go back to chapter 10 at this point, so that is the right thing to do. So let's quit that for now. Um, but once again, this still assumes that we're in the new um, system. So we've got to take care that we don't go to the existing SUS 6.1 system. So I'm just going to go to the SUS, uh, sorry, the LFS ETC directory. See, it's on the root there, but we haven't got it under the root. We've got it under MNT LFS. And we make all these directories. Um, oh, it says we need a sysv init package, but there's not stuff to compile. It's just a particular file that needs to be copied. So let's go back to sources. Now we've done that. Uh, so cat sysv init and extract it. So go to it, go to the source directory, which we're in now. Uh, does it mean the SRC directory as well, maybe? So let's have a look. Copy the Debian ETC. No, so it's from, the, so we are in the source. So, okay, it does mean from this point here, CP Debian ETC init dot d rc file and we want to copy that to remember not forward slash etc init d but we've got to prefix that with dollar lfs etc init d now we go to the ect init d directory in lfs uh, etc init d so there's that RC file we've just copied and create a new RCS containing the following. So VI RC capital S copy that. Go to insert mode and paste it. And you can see once again the formatting's gone a little bit out just because of the way it appears in the book, but it shouldn't cause too many problems if you don't reformat that. Create a new reboot file. So it doesn't say to create it anywhere else. It still says in the place we're in, which just double check is in under the MNT LFS hierarchy. So VI reboot, insert, copy that. Again, the formatting is a little bit squiffy, but not to worry. Create the halt script. So create, and it's called halt. Insert. And you can see these scripts are extremely basic. Um, so you get an idea exactly of what does what and how they work. There's no extraneous stuff to try and work your way through. So next we've got to do the mount fs script. So that's all of this. So that, then the U mount. All right, let's copy and paste that to save as any uh, typos. Insert. Copy all of that. And save. And 
and finally a send signal script. And save. So I've set the proper file permissions, permissions by running chmod 755 on all of these. Then change into RC, let's do one of these commands at a time so we can see exactly what's going on. Change into RC6 and make a link called S90 U-mount FS to U-mount FS. And another one for reboot. It's be nicer if we could have the V here so we could see exactly what's going on. It'll tell us. And likewise for send signals. Then we're going to RC0.d and do a similar sort of thing. Create some sim links. And finally we go back to RCS or, or into RCS, sorry, and create one for Mount FS. Now we create an etc etc FS tab file. So let's just go back to our etc edit FS tab. Um, insert, let's just copy this as it is and then we can modify it as we need to. So I can't remember the names of the partitions, in particular the swap and the boot. Um, F disk minus L. So we need, we've got the swap as HDA3 um, and the boot is HDA2. So swap is HDA3. Uh, oh, we need to do the root. Let's do that one first. HDA6. Okay. So let's save that. Uh, let's see what it says to test the system next, which is Oops, a good idea. Let's actually go and see what's next. So that's the reinstalling the statically linked software. Rest of the system software. Right, okay. So yes, we can reboot and go back to... Oh yes, let's do this boot script that we tried to do. Let's do that before we carry on. So... Let me just check my notes here. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, some of these scripts are not correct. Um, I had problems when booting them um, that the syntax is incorrect of some of these scripts, or one of the scripts at least I think it was. I think it was the first one. Yeah, I think what's missing here, there's a... See, this has got if-then... This has just got an if without a then, um, and it causes it to fail. So, um, and also I believe the fi is missing at the end of this. Um, so what I'll do actually is I'll leave it as it is so you can see what the error is, and then try and fix it afterwards. Um, 10.7, do we do that? Yes. Oh, yes, I didn't do the boot, but I might leave that as it is. Um, Slash dev slash HDA2 gets mounted on boot uh, and it's an ext2 d 
defaults zero two. I might leave that remarked out. So what will happen is that the boot will be used. The one that we won't have actually a separate boot at the moment. And we can enable that if needs be. Um, Tab. I made some changes to a knit tab. Uh, oh yes, that was something that was uh, a bit curious to me. It's got the init the init default as two, um, and I th I think that's wrong. So if we do init run levels, search for this. Um, So we'll look at this Wikipedia page. Why is that not working? That's better. Uh, Linux standard base multi user mode is run level two. Now, admittedly, that's going to be two until, you know, uh, just, just for a short while because we're going to be getting networking running. So I think this should be run level three. And also later on, um, as I remember, some new scripts are created just to work on run level two. And again, I think that's wrong as well. As we know, we're going to be creating a run level uh, with networking. I actually think the default is, should be three. Um, so unless you know that you're not going to be using networking, um, I would change it to three as well. If you know you're not going to be using networking, leave it as two and treat the rest of the book as it is. Um, but as I say, because we're going to be using networking, we set it up. It's strange actually because um, it's one of the you know next chapters or next but one chapter is all about setting up servers. So you'd obviously need net well, you don't need networking, but it indicates you would need networking for those. So what I'm going to do is to change this to change the default run level to two. Uh, so, sorry, to three. Um, I'm going to go back to init. Dot D. Uh, sorry, back to let's uh, do ls when I set out rc two dot D. Yeah, there's no scripts in there at the moment, so I've just got to bear in mind that any that are created that refer to run level two that I'd need to change them to run level three. So. That's something to bear in mind. So let's move on to the boot script. Um, so we need to, so this is not root etc init d, it's going to be lfs init uh, etc init d local net insert copy this again now this should work because the directory will exist yep it has done so it's come out of that so we need to change the permissions on that so chmod lfs etc local net or etc init d local net and then change into rcs.d yep see that that's where we're wrong it needs to be dollar lfs and then create a sim link create the host name file so let's go back and edit uh, host name so this is what am I going to call this computer so I'm going to call it LFS-1.0 so that's the canonical name of the computer and then a hosts file uh, 
And as you can see, this is where we specify any fully qualified domain name and any possible aliases for it. So the IP is, oops, let's insert 192.168.0.37. So whatever IP you choose here, you've got to retain because you'll need it to set up the networking. And the name we've just given in the hostname file is what comes next. And then optionally a domain name and then aliases. So one good alias is to put the host name down again and any others that you want the machine to be known by. And there's some information there about uh, networking. So let's save that. Now we need to decide if we're going to configure without a network network card or with a network card. Well, um, I'm going to configure with a network card, so we need to modify that again. And oh, I see it's actually giving giving us some uh, a fuller example of uh, hosts. So this is the line we've just done. Um, we need to add in that line there. So let's copy the comment as well. Insert that there. And just do the terminating comment as well. And you can see, obviously, if you're not using a network, then this is pretty redundant because you won't have an IP address and you won't be allowing other machines to access you. So next we need to... Um, configure the initd ethernet file. So this is the network configuration file. So $LFS ethernet file. And we'll just copy and paste that. So this is what will start the networking interface. And we need to set up some permissions. And once again, here, here's the first example of where run level two is used and it's for the ethernet. So it's definitely the wrong standard. Um, so we want to go into run level three Okay, that assumes we're in the NITD, we're not, so we just need to do RC3D and just copy and paste this as it is. So if we look at that, we can see that it, this S10 Ethernet is pointing to the NITD Ethernet, which we just created. There it is there. And then testing, which we can't do at the moment until we reboot so that's that chapter done uh, which is chapter 13 so in theory um, we should have uh, networking enabled when uh, we reboot into LFS next time um, we should be able to continue the installation with Telnet and activate it as well, um, ready for use. Um, and then from that point, we should be able to just access the machine remotely and copy and paste stuff into it as we are at the moment. But it will be directly into the Linux from scratch 1.0 rather than uh, through a mounted partition on SUS 6.1. So what I should do now, I think it is time to reboot again into Linux from scratch 1.0. Let's just check what's next. So it's email, which I'm not going to touch any of that. And then internet server. So 
This will be the bit I'll do next, 15.1. As I say, I expect some failures because uh, I'm sure that first script we put in um, is the syntax is incorrect. I seem to remember I had some problems with that. Um, but I guess we won't know until we reboot into it. So I'll shut this down. And reboot. Okay, so here we go back into Lilo on the boot LFS 1.0. Let's get the browser up. So, as you can see, we've got syntax errors um, in the scripts, which is what I said would happen. Um, yeah, cannot execute init D R C S. So we need to look at that script. Um, let's get back to where we were originally. Right, so did Vim. We've created all these boot scripts. I think this is the one that's got to be corrected. Yeah, it is RCS that it's complaining about. And as I say, I'm pretty sure um, a then is missing and a, an FI is missing from that, uh, as I recall. So we'll need to fix that. And I'll just check this script here as well, in case I've done something wrong there. Um, so let's let's do that now. Uh, so root and we'll change into etc init. Dot d and we've got Vim, so we can edit these files. So you can see why it's useful to have Vim early on. RCS. So, um, all right, okay. I forgot I need to remount the file system into read, write, read, write, remount slash dev slash, uh, and the reason why, although we've created an FS tab, the reason why it's still read only is probably because these scripts aren't working correctly. So uh, HDA6 and remount it on root. Now let's retry editing. Um, I assume the then goes here Oops. and the fi will go here so let's try and run that uh, it's got execute permission so let's just try running rcs it says permission denied Okay, is that because something else runs it or does it need to be made executable? I would have thought it needs to be made executable. Um, let's check my notes, see if I've missed anything there. It's certainly not in the instructions because I've followed all of them. It says to just run chmod on these ones. Um, and I reckon it's missed RCS as part of that list. Um, yes, it is missing. So we need to do um, chmod 755 on RCS. So now I'll try and rerun that and now it's run successfully. So that's okay. Let's just scroll back 
and see what the other error was. Oh, it looks like it's been overwritten by Vim. So what I'm going to do is to come out of this. Um, oh, I need to remount it again, don't I, as read only. So remount the partition as read only. Yeah, you can see the mount's not showing anything. So that tells me that FS tab wasn't read correctly or not at all. So now I've set it to read only. I'm going to do reboot minus F. Uh, sorry, that's the login, isn't it? Let's try to control delete. Yep, that seems to be working. Maybe it's because we've got some scripts there now that the reboot is actually successful. So I'll just wait for the screen to sync and come up again. And I'll once again type in LFS-1.0. Yeah, so we've still got that other script causing a problem. But you'll notice there's no complaints about RCS um, coming up now. So we know that that bit's working fine. Let's log in. Let's do a mount now. See if the partitions are mounted correctly. So they're not. They're still not mounted correctly. Um, that's interesting. No, it's still a read-only file system. So whether that's to do with this Ethernet script not working, um, and that's causing something else not to run, I don't know yet. So we'll need to investigate that. Um, so let's mount the file system read-only. We've got history now because we're logging in as a proper user. We wouldn't have had history before. So we can do uh recall that command and search for it to remount the file system as read write and let's edit etc rc3 dot d s10 ethernet sorry it's vim Oh yes, of course. This is the init the Ethernet, so that's why it's um, it's but oh, well, of course, yep. Yeah, I haven't set the IP address to assign against the Ethernet device, so that's why this has failed. So I've obviously missed that somewhere. Where was that? Right, yes, there was no prompt to actually change that there. You just have to spot it, and I didn't spot it. So I need to put in, once again, 168037, which is the IP address I've chosen for this machine, and save it. And once again, I'm going to remount as read-only. And reboot and see what effect this has. I'm still not sure about the partition being mounted. Um, read write. Um, I'm not sure if there's another script still due to be put in, which is possible, or if there is still a bug or not with the scripts. I don't remember having this sort of problem with uh, mounting. The partition, the root partition is read write, read write. So I'm hoping that it's either something that will work now because the Ethernet script's working, or it's something that's due to be installed that will fix that. So you can see it says entering run level three, which is correct. There's no errors now, so we should actually have 
internet access. Right, yeah, looks like the partition is still getting mounted read only. That's okay, I suppose, at the moment. Let's try and contact the gateway. And yes, there we go. We've got internet access now. And we can also do IF config. Okay, we haven't got a proc files. Yeah, so FS tabs obviously not being read because proc should have been mounted. So let's try doing mount the root. Already mounted or boot. Okay, that needs to be mounted manually as read write. Let's mount proc. So now we should be able to do IF config and you can see there's ETH0. Uh, there's the IP address. It says it's up and running. So that all confirms that everything's okay. Um, yeah, so obviously FS tab is there, but it's not being read by anything. And that doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it at all. So what I'm going to do is just go back to make sure I've not missed anything. Uh, so boot scripts, reboot, halt mount FS. So let's try running that to see if that works. Right, yeah, so it's not being run. Oh no, it's already mounted and failed. Now that might be to do with the fact that we're already in run level three. And let's look at the boot messages. Yeah, there's no messages there indicating that it's trying to mount it. So it looks like that mount script's not being run at boot time. Root partition should mention rewrite mode automatically. So why isn't it? So those are all executable. See, uh, so it looks like uh, I wonder if RCS equates to run level two. I'm not sure about that. Let's have a look. It could well be. Oh, yeah, of course. I've got an uh, internet connection on this one. Let me just have a look on another machine. Right, that is actually single user mode, so that would be before there's even any virtual terminals. So that should be running at all times, really. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is to ignore that for the moment. Uh, install the rest. I'll have to remember to install the or mount the partitioners, read-write anytime I reboot. 
um, until that gets enabled. Um, and if it doesn't, then there's obviously something else that needs to be looked at. Um, but the fact that it says it should be mounted, uh, I wonder if I've put the Zen in the wrong, wrong place actually. I'll put it down here. I wonder if it should go there possibly. Let's try that. Not being a big bash scripting person, I'm not too sure exactly how this works. Let's try it there. Oh, have I got to? Oh, it has mounted it read only. Okay. Uh, sorry, read right. So let's remove that. And let's try rerunning it. No, that is incorrect. CSD. And the mount FS is there and the net yeah, see the network starting. So yeah, I'm actually wondering because I can't see anything else in my notes. I don't remember having a particular problem with this. Um I can't see anything in my notes about fixing this. Um, Ah, oh, now that is probably why, because it isn't starting on the S level. So we've got an Ethernet, or a link to Ethernet at run level 3. Yeah, so that's what's missing. Um, I can see a little line I've squeezed in where I've copied in my notes. Uh, we need to copy this, but change it for... Um, RCS3, I think it's that one. Yeah, so where we do this for RC, uh, let me show you. Uh, that one, that one, that one. Yes, you see the Ethernet's created here and then it's copied um, into RC2, which, well, let's say I change that to RC3. What needs to happen, I think, is the, uh, oh no, Mount FS. The network's running, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm a bit confused by this, actually. Yes. Oh yes, this makes sense now. I had problems getting the local network working and I can see why now because this, these two scripts in RCS are not, not being run correctly and I've only in my notes put down to copy mount FS but not local net. 
so that's probably why okay so what I need to do then is to um, do something similar to what we've got there we need to change directory to rc3.d and then do ln minus sv dot dot init dot d forward slash so we need the first one which is network uh, sorry local network local net is that right S3 local net goes to network, right? Yes, S3 net goes to network. So let's copy that as um, SO3 local net. Let's check that's what it's called. Yeah, SO3 local net. And that gets pointed to. Sorry, that should be network. Work, and that's SO3 local net. Yeah, that's right. So we've now got a link to that local net. That means the local network should work. So if I do, although we've got the network working, So yeah, we can ping outside the machine. If I do ping uh, local host, oh, it's, yeah, network unreachable, it's not working. And 127.0.0.1, that's not working either because that bit hasn't been set up. And then the other one we need to do is the mount fs at run level three. So we need to do ln minus sv uh, dot dot init dot d um, mount fs and not sure what number that got. Let's have a look back. There is S10 mount FS at the top of the screen, so S10 mount FS. So let's make that the same number. Great. So now in uh, RC3.d, which is the default run level, we should get the local network enabled. The Ethernet was already enabled because that script was already there, and um, the file system should be mounted correctly because that's the one we just created as well. Problem with the date on here, that's the wrong date then. Not sure about that. Monday to set no that's right. Oh sorry, yes. That's the file size, isn't it? Sorry, I'm getting muddled up here. That's the date from there, December the eighteenth, yep. It just looks a bit weird, looks like the way we'd write it in the UK is like the 17th of December 2018. It looks totally wrong. Um, right, okay, so this now means if I reboot, everything should work. So the local networking, the internet should be working, or the ethernet, and the file system should be mounted correctly. So this is the only bit I had a real issue with, um, apart from getting those test C programs compiled, which was just down to me not understanding what I was doing and not reading the instructions correctly and the fact that that suffix of a file was not CPP um, which threw me for a while. Th this was the only issue I had in the configuration um, from from the book. So what I should do now is to um, well just for safety's sake I'm going to remount the file system as read only 
So mount minus n minus o, ro, comma, remount the root. And I'm going to log out and do a control delete here. And I expect everything to be working. So I've got to check the local network's working, the Ethernet and the mounts of the file system is working correctly. Now I didn't actually fathom out why the local net was working and I didn't spend too much time on it. Um, so if it doesn't work now, I'm not going to spend time on it getting it working. It didn't affect the rest of the build. Um, but as long as I've got network access, that's the important thing for me. So LFS-1.0. So yes, we've got a messenger now saying that we've got no error messages. Firstly, it's the most important thing. And second most important thing, it says remounting root file system in rewrite mode, okay. Mounting the proc file system as well. So now I'll log in. And the first thing I'll do is I'll ping the, well, no, first thing I'll do is I'll do a mount. And you can see now that we can see the two file systems that get mounted that were specified in the FS tab. And you can see that they're both read write as well. So if I do make the say Q, it's worked straight away. It's not refused to do it. So I remove that directory. Next, I'll check that the internet access is working by picking my gateway. That's fine. I'll ping the name server as well, just for fun. That's fine. And I'll also now try the local loopback IP address and oh no it's still not working so um, whether there's more configuration there or not I don't know neighbor table overflow yeah I'm not sure what that's about um, so like I say that doesn't appear to be working properly but I'm not going to concern myself too much about it um, so what I'm going to do next is to um, just look at my notes I thought there was something else I was going to do and I can't think what it is now. No, I can't think. Uh... Oh yes, I was just going to take a look at ETC init dot d local net uh, so it sets up if config to point at one two seven zero zero one oh yeah I guess that's something I could try in fact come to think of there is there are some tests to run yeah these tests here so it suggests to test the network to ping your own fully qualified domain name so for me, that's LFS-1.0 uh, dot mynet dot org. Uh, that's not working. That's interesting. Okay. Well, actually, one thing I've just thought about is that the resolve.conf has not been set. So, and that's not mentioned anywhere, as I remember in the instructions. So, I'm going to do that next. Set that up. Um, I'm not sure if this will fix everything, but it certainly will help. Yeah, see, there's nothing there. So, I need to put name server 192.168.0. Dot eight, which is my name server. Yours might be something else. Um, just copy it from your router or another computer. And I'll set a domain as well because I've got this computer on a domain. And it's mynet.org. So that's 
So let's now try this ping command again. Yeah, that's still not working. And I guess that's not going to work either. No. So LFS dash one dot zero. Yeah, it should work. I don't know why. So those two don't work. The local host doesn't work. And the loopback, but the main thing for me at the moment is that the IP address works. Um, and like I said, I don't know why these other ones don't work. I'm not a, a network expert. Network is unreachable. I might have to do some research on that. But as you saw, the ping to the... Um, well, let's try the own network card. Oh, that's not working. So it's anything on the loop back, isn't it? Let's do init.d local net. I don't know if status works. It just starts it blindly. I have config. Shows that the loopback's there on the internet address 127.0.0.1. So I'm not really sure why it won't. Oh, it is working. Oh, so maybe that's not working then, even though I've set it to run at run level 3. Okay, that's very strange. Local net runs to network. Oops. Oh, oh, right, okay, so there's a mistake in there. That says it's pointed to network when we set that up. And there's no such script, the looks of it. Ah, oh, right, so where, where did we create that? That's why that's not working. Local net script. It's the RCS reboot halt mount mount FS send signals. Or have I copied something wrong? ETCFS tab. Yeah, all the network stuff's in this directory here. Oh, there it is. There. Yeah. There's a mis so this is another mistake here. That's wrong. I think that should read local net. So I'm going to update my. I think that's obviously why I didn't have the local net working before. Um, just going to make a note to update my notes to reflect that. So. Add network card version. That uh, so it's RCS dot D and then minus S init D network should be a local net. So I guess I should test that now. 
by modifying that. So let's go to um, etc rc3 uh, dot d and oh that was a cat I did there cd so I need to remove so3 in fact I can overwrite it actually ln minus SV, F will force an overwrite of the link to init.d um, local net uh, to S03 uh, SO3 oh they just call it local net, okay Right, and that's why I didn't get any error for the network one. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, of course, because it, it's pointed. This script was pointed to nothing, so that's why there's no errors because it wouldn't run. There was nothing to run, um, and obviously these scripts are so simple. There's no checking to say that I couldn't find that file or anything. So I think now, if I reboot once more, I have a feeling. And I'll keep my fingers crossed that everything will work properly now, that including the local networking. So let's see. Okay, so LFS dash one dot zero. So that all looks good. No error messages. It says the loopback device has been activated, the host name has been activated. So now let's run through these tests at the bottom again. So ping your fully qualified domain name. So ping lfs onenetorg And yes, it's now working correctly. Then ping what you choose or chose that should be for the host name. So that's that just that bit. That's working fine. Ping local host. Yep, that's all good. Ping the loopback IP address directly. So there's local host. And then ping my own address, which is 37. And yes, yeah, so that's great. I'm in a better position than when I was testing this out. Uh, like I said, I didn't have the IP, local IP network running at all. So that's good. And again, if I do IF config, you can see it's there again. It says it's up and running, just like it did before. It's just the configuration that was not correct. Right, so that's all good. So the thing we need to do now is to carry on with the Telnet access. So let me get back to where I was in my notes. And let's get this here. So email we're not doing it at all. Internet servers installing the Telnet daemon and clients. So oh it also does links here as well. So I might let's have a look at links. Yeah, I might install links as well while while I'm here. Um it's not too onerous to type that stuff in. Um, I did use links all the time while I was de developing this and well not developing te yeah developing the uh, run for recording this as a project and for doing my notes but um, that was purely for downloading the packages and testing the packages while I was going through the 
the document. Um, but it's you know not needed at the moment the way I'm doing it. But I may as well do it because it's on the same page here. So let's start with the Telnet client. So change into sources and I want to extract uh, is that cat uh, is it netkit I think yeah netkit dash telnet pipe that into tar cd net kit dash telnet and the first thing we've got to do is to configure the package by running configure dash dash with dash c dash compiler. Oh yeah, this, this doesn't compile with the newer GCC and you've explicitly got to tell it um, about the older GCC and the older C++. So that's why it's a bit of a long-winded. Uh, configuration so forward slash user again you can use auto completion here to save having typos and save a bit of typing with your fingers dash dash with c plus plus dash compiler equals forward slash user gcc bin c plus plus All right, what's it say here? Oh yes, I had this before and what I did, it seemed to work was I just changed this to GCC. And it's a bit of a strange thing why it specifies something that's clearly not there at the moment. Um, I can't fathom out why that is. So, um, see that seems to work and it compiles okay as well. So let's now run it. Uh, run the build and wait for it to complete. Okay, that's all done. It's quite quick actually considering the server then, but I guess it's quite a basic server. There's no errors there anyway and it's completed. So now we do make install and that's done. So now I'm going to scroll down, skip all these bits. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll come back to links. We'll have to build Zlib as well because uh, links need Zlib. Just jump down to this configuring the daemons, configuring Telnet D. So I'll have to type this in. Oh no, I'm not typing that in by hand. I'll have to do that when we reboot. I'll have to boot into SUE 6.1 for the last time. So what I will do is I will do Zlib now and links. Um, while I'm here, let me just see if I've got any notes for these two. doesn't look like it. it looks like they're straightforward so I'm going to leave the telnet directory there in case it's needed I don't think it is but I'm not going to delete it yet because it's not complete completely installed so zcat zlib tar minus xv cd zlib and we first run configure again And that's done. Make and finally install it. And that's done. So now we can install links. So it's a cat links, pipe it through tar. 
And you'll notice the directory that extracts is not quite the same as the um, tarball in that uses dashes instead of full stops for the version numbering. Then we configure the package by running configure dash dash lib the equals four slash etc minus minus. In fact, why not? I think what I'll do is I'll just reboot, get Telnet working, and then carry on building links um, just for completeness, and then go back and just rebuild the rest of the system uh, rather than risk typing something in wrong. So I'll log out, I'll reboot, and come back to um, the remote computer with SUSE Linux 6.1. Okay, so here we go, back on the remote machine, and I'm going to jump into the Pentium machine, so I can jump through that into the SUSE Linux via Telnet. Okay, so just become root, change into LFS, and this hopefully is the last time I'll need to do this. Go into sources, so there we are, let's tidy that up a bit. There's a few bits of detritus hanging around. Get rid of that one. Okay, so we were doing, let's finish off Netkit Telnet first of all. So we've built it, we just need to configure it. So we need to, again, we've got to be careful we're in SUS here, so we've got to remember to use the prefix, the LFS prefix. And we're creating a new file here. and a boot script to use that file as well in inetd. So $LFS initd inetd script, boot script, insert. So this is quite a big script, this one. Save it. Now we need to change the mode to make it executable. And then create some links. So CD $LFS. So once again, this has got run level two. I'm going to be using run level three. and create a link at startup to INETD for on level three. And create a kill script for shutdown in, sorry, but change to it first, in run level zero. And likewise, a kill script for, uh, I think it's reboot, isn't it? Run level six. I think that's the right way around. What's up? Oh, right, okay. So there's another typo in the book. That should be like that. So that should be telnet d started so in theory if we rebooted now we should have a telnet daemon running um, we should be able to turn it in remotely as i am at the moment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a chance and reboot the machine and blindly type in lfs 1.0 at the lilo prompt 
Um, I can't see the screen at the moment uh, just because of the way I've got things set up here. So if I quit this, so that's me back to my kernel text user. Yeah, so if I tell net to P233, you can see it's reporting that it's SUS Linux 6.1. If I log in as kernel text and do, for example, uname minus A, you can see we're on Linux kernel 227. And if you remember, the Linux from scratch version was 2.2.13. Um, so yes, I think what I'm going to do is become root and do a reboot here and quit and wait for it to reboot and just type blindly on the keyboard LFS-1.0 to boot it into Linux from scratch. And I think in theory it should hopefully work and I'll be able to turn it into the LFS system instead. Right, so it's just rebooted now. Let's wait for the bleep. Right, just look at the hard disk line, wait for the bootloader to load, and that looks like it there. Right, yeah, the hard disk light's on, it's doing something, so. Let's wait for it to settle. Yep, seems like it's booted okay. It's settled now. So I'm gonna, again, turn it to P233 again. Right, and it's not working, okay. So it obviously hasn't worked. Connection refused. Is there anything else to configure? Okay, so maybe I need to go back to the uh, machine and run these commands here to test it. There could be something else going on. Okay, so I'm at the terminal again. Um, and you can see there's an error there. It's looking like it's missing a program called start stop daemon. Um, I think I know what the problem is because I remembered something I was doing before the system was complete to get the telnet working. And that was um, that I was running it directly from the installation directory. So if I log in and see these sources, uh, net kit telnet, there's a telnet D directory which is there, that line there. If you see the internet, um, there's an executable there called telnet D. Now, what the problem is, that start stop daemon, it's a package that gets installed towards the end of the build um, and it's used to obviously start and stop daemons and that's why the script has failed um, straight away because that hasn't been installed yet. And like I say, it's one of the last things to be installed. Um, I guess we could install it now, um, but I don't know what else it relies on that hasn't been installed yet. So what I'm gonna do is just start telnet the telnet daemon as I did when I was um, developing these this the instructions for this video all these videos so um, what I'm going to do is you can see telnet's available there because we've installed it um, yeah sorry yes I was running it from this directory because I hadn't installed it but we have actually got telnet d installed well, I know it's not installed that must be a separate install so or a separate way of being installed or accessing it. So um, you, this needs to be run in a particular way. If you run it just like that, it doesn't work. Um, so you have to run it. Well, I found that running it in debug mode was the way to get it working. And also you've got to specify the port it wants to be run on, which is 23 by default for Telnet. So if I run that, it just sits there. Now one problem with Telnet D, uh, Telnet, which it mentions here, one of the reasons why um, 
it started via INET D is because Telnet D doesn't seem to respawn itself when the last user logs out. So this would mean as soon as the last person logs out from Telnet session, the Telnet daemon stops as well. So it's not really that convenient, especially if it's on a remote machine that's got hasn't got um, easy access. Now this machine I'm recording the screen on hasn't got network access, so I can't demonstrate that that works. So what I'll do is I'll access it from another terminal that you won't be able to see. Right, okay, yes, it's working. So now I've, I've got the prompt up of this machine. I'll just check you name, minus A, and I can see it says, yeah, the Linux version is 2.2.13 and the name of the computer is LFS 1.0. Now what I'm going to do is Control D to log out and you'll see on the screen that the um, prompt will return because as the description says in the book here, it just holds the session up for as long as the connection is held up. And you can see I've just quit and that prompt has come back. So you can see that's just the only problem that if I quit a session, I've got to on the terminal rerun the command to create the server. So if I try to connect and find it, it's not working is because that that has crashed out. So what I'm going to do now is to reboot back to the remote terminal and carry on with the build. And like I say, one of the last things we'll be doing is to install um, a package. It's, I think it's a Debian package. Um, just a, a script, I believe it is, that, that will handle the starting of all the daemons that get installed. Um, and in fact, I think this is probably the only one we do in, in Linux from scratch. And this may seem a lot of work to chop and change around the book, but I'm purely doing this just for convenience, just so I can copy and paste as many of the commands as possible. Um, if you don't find that desirable or convenient, then you could just go through the book page by page, typing in the commands manually, but obviously that's prone to errors. So I'm going to leave this up and running as it is. I'm going to reboot uh, and go back to the remote machine and we'll carry on finishing the build from there. Right, so here we are once again on the remote terminal. Um, well, testing the demons, I've just tested it. I'm going to access it now so you can see it working and then once we're in, we can carry on. So first thing I need to do is to get into my server, which has got the telnet command. And then I can turn it into the Pentium 233. And you can see straight away, it's extremely quick. The Linux version is reported as 2.2.13. That's the one that we compiled for Linux from scratch 1.0. And you can even see that the host name is Linux from scratch 1.0 mynet.org. So I'm now got a prompt and it's waiting for me to log in. So I'll type root. And again, we're straight in, no password asked because there is no password. And just once again to check, there we have the details showing that we're on the correct terminal. And it's confirmed by the version number and even the date as well that it's compiled on the 14th. So I can go to sources. Obviously got to be very careful here that I don't delete the directory where the Telnet program is running because it's I've actually run it from that that location, so I've got to bear that in mind. Um, but apart from that, I can carry on building, and I was actually going to do links next. Um, it's almost a bit pointless, but I was in the middle of doing it. I'd installed Zlib, so I'll carry on finish that and actually go back and do the. Um, Oh, what am I doing? I'm going the wrong way here. Uh, do the actual system proper, the update of this proper system. So back to links we want, don't we? Which is under here. So chapter 14. Uh, was it here? No, it was the next one. Internet service because I put it as part, being part of Apache. 
Oh, yes, there's one thing. Now, I couldn't get a, a Slang library that worked correctly or I didn't know if it was the right version or not to work with links. Um, and it does say there that people recommend using the Slang library with links, even though NCurses works correctly. And because I had trouble getting Slang or getting the correct version and getting it working, um, I didn't bother. I just used NCurses in the end, even though he says that he couldn't find the difference he used their slang anyway uh, because he just wanted to follow the advice. Um, but like I said, because I was getting problems with their slang and because links wasn't that important to me, I could download the files, which is what I was using it for. I wasn't really using it for browsing. Um, that's all I was really bothered with. Um, to be quite honest, I should perhaps have installed wget, but wget's not in this book and I wanted to stay as true as possible to this book. Um, although obviously exceptions like this one using NCurses. So that's why I'm not installing Slang. Uh, 